I'm Dave Reaver. For the next hour, we're going to be presenting to you on video some of the most bizarre, 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 bizarre and unbelievable things that we have ever presented through television efforts. In my lifetime, I've known some war, and in my lifetime, I have seen some of the bizarre. I've known suffering, but I've never known of the bizarre. I've never known of suffering like you're going to hear about in this video. And I certainly promise you this. It is bizarre. I also think you should know that we accept responsibility for saying up front, I do, do, parents, please don't allow children to watch this video. <laughs> The darkness of Satanism is spreading rapidly today, especially among young people. The evil influences bearing down on teenagers uh, have become a lot. In the music, most teens involved in Satanism are dabblers. They wear the clothes, try a few rituals, and listen to the heavy metal bands. But some go further. Teenagers recruited into these cults are told of the thrills and untapped power they can achieve through Satan. And they are promised drugs, drugs and, and sex. sex. But nine drops of blood. Take a little bit of that, his blood and put a little sugar in water and make him drink of his own blood. New Orleans, bustling city on the Mississippi. Most voodoo practitioners live in the swampy backwaters of lower Louisiana. The slaughter in Mount Mortis. We've had notes written about uh, Satan on walls and schools. You know, that my God's better than your God and all this. We had one note, you're welcome to a bloodbath ritual. I'll be there at 1154 for the result for the gatekeeper of hell to appear. Bring your set clothes or black sheets. This is what's going on in basically the schools. Usually, it's very secretive. As far as the kids go, you know, they don't know anything. They haven't done anything. Parents usually think... My kid just going through a, you know, a phase. Again, Satanists will entice a recruit with these three promises. Power, drugs, and sex. Without heavy involvement in drugs, most of these recruits would not be able to go on. Most of the time, like I said, there's drugs involved. Just because you're taking drugs does not necessarily mean you're into Satanism. But nine times out of ten, Satanists turn into drugs. Completely, 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 completely. You're no longer dealing with human beings as you and I know them. Well, Yvonne Peterson tells this tragic story of one girl who committed a heinous crime in the name of Satan. And they didn't have time for her. I'm going to call her Diane for the book, okay? And um, that's not a real name, but she was a very intelligent, pretty a little girl of 12 years old. She went to a party and she met a young man, which we'll, we'll call him Steve, okay? He's 16. And Steve told her he would listen to her and he would pay attention. Now, this is, this is not fiction. And this isn't something I read in a book. I sat with this little girl as she cried her eyes out, as she walked through the memories of the past two years, uh, the things that she had had done to her and had had to do to other people. Uh, he told her, I'll listen to you. And he gave her a marijuana cigarette. And they went outside because now she was hooked on cocaine. Okay, at the end of the six months, he told her that he was a Satanist priest and that she was being recruited and that she would be initiated into his coven of, of Satanists. She kept a diary. And at one point, she said, Where has that innocent child gone? Will I ever know her again? And then on August the 1st, three years ago, she was led into a cemetery. And if I might have your permission, I'd like to read from her hand the memories of that night. Uh, please do. Bright colors and lightning flashed streaks through the sky. Sometimes the colors exploded like rockets on the 4th of July, both in and out of our head. When the chanting started, they brought in a little baby. He was barely walking. We tied him to a nearby tomb. It was crying. After it was tied down, Chris took out his sacrificial dagger. I held back the baby's head while he cut it from the base of its neck down to its waistline and across the stomach. The baby was still alive, so I broke its neck by just about twisting it off. I hate myself so bad now. I helped in the killing of a baby. Drugs, sex, power. These are the enticements Satanists use to lure teenagers. Another is music. 
specifically heavy metal or black metal. I think music has always been a powerful media, all the way through. I mean, music was important to you and me, and, and it's important to the teenagers today. And we're not anti-heavy metal, but we're anti the heavy metal message that is causing death and destruction. And the symbols that they're using are so blatantly occultic um, that it's very difficult for us to overlook that kind of thing. For instance, if we take uh, the album uh, cover from Slayer's album, Rain and Blood, uh, it depicts a message to young people that maybe consciously they don't receive, but subconsciously they're receiving this message. On the front of this album cover, uh, Satan is depicted as a goat, which is very familiar to the Satanists. They know that that would be the goat would represent Satan. And he is seated on a wooden throne. And the wooden throne is being supported by two people. Now, in the hand of this goat is a decapitated head. And, of course, we're finding decapitated bodies all over America. And um, that is a common way for a Satanist ritual to occur is to do the decapitation. And so he's holding this decapitated head, which emphasizes the bloodletting ritual and the murder. And then the throne is, is lifted up and being carried on the shoulders of two men. The man in the foreground is wearing a mitered hat, which we know to be the hat of a pope. And so that man represents organized religion or the church. Behind him is another man who is carrying the throne of Satan, not only on his shoulders, but across his neck, like the stalks would have him in bondage. And that man has horns and a forked tongue. And when you look at that, you think, oh, this is one of Satan's demons. And yet, if you look carefully, his hands are very prominent in the picture, and they have nail marks in them. And the only man depicted throughout history with nail marks is Jesus Christ. And so what this thing is saying to them is that Christ and the church will support the rise and, of Satanism and in addition to that, then there's a sea of blood that is flowing into a huge sea below Satan that all the faces are down in the sea that he has taken captive and, and have become his victim. And the very fore, the, in the forefront, there is a face that if you take that face and put it up against the face of George Washington, you'll see that they're almost the same. I mean, they're so identical. And so what we're saying here is that Satanism is going to take over our country and that it is going to be brought in and supported by Christ himself and the organized church. That is blatant, 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 blatant occult rituals. Parents should be alert to the warning signs that show their kids are involved in the cults. Besides the music, there are the clothing, jewelry, and symbols used. There is the classic pentagram, worn inverted by the Satanist, the broken cross or peace sign, the inverted cross, the horned hand sign, the goat's head, the 666 sign, and many others. Satanists entrap young people in several ways. At sex parties, they take snapshots of their victims for use of blackmail, or they'll involve the unsuspecting victim in their darkest rituals, perhaps animal or human sacrifice. They will get the teenager to offer his blood or even a finger to Satan. The tragic legacy of Satanism. Where was Satanism when we were kids? They tried to run.